All right, welcome to part three of our robot tutorial. So here we are. Uh, we build this in video one and two. If you did not watch those, please um, watch those first. And now let's continue. So on uh, in this video, the next uh, step for my uh, robot, what I would like to do is take care of this outline or maybe clean it up a little bit. Um, so one of the things that I want to point out is if you select any of the pieces that we modeled previously and go to your channel box, you will see that you have history of every single uh, thing that we've done, you know, from beveling to extruding. And this that is true for every single piece of geometry. So we no longer need uh, all of that information to be stored on inside, inside our mesh. And actually, uh, sometimes that can actually create issues when you're rigging. So when you're rigging uh, and adding joints and animation, uh, these things can actually get on the way. So you always want to, when you finish uh, and you're done editing, maybe uh, it would be a good idea to actually clean this up. So the fastest way to do it is just select uh, everything and just go to edit, delete by type, and just do a history uh, cleanup. So once as soon as you do that, uh, you can select each mesh and see that all the history is gone. So you can go backwards and undo stuff, but now the geometry is very light and uh, clean. And at the same time, um, the outliner cleaned itself up as well, right? So we had all that extra stuff in there. So that's important. Uh, one of the things that we still have is the curves from creating our cable, if you remember. Uh, we no longer need that, so I'm actually going to just select it here and press delete key. I don't need that. And uh, let's open up this group and take a look. So in the group, we have all these pieces. Actually, uh, what I would like to do is select these pieces and then middle mouse button and drag them out. So I'm just going to drag them out of the group. And I'm going to do the same thing with the base. Just move everything out of the group. I don't need anything to be in groups. And if we wanted to, we can just I actually have my history dragged out um, on my shelf here. But if you guys want to just clean this up one more time just to make sure. And now uh, this group is empty, right? Because we dragged everything out. So I'm going to press delete key, delete key uh, um, on the group to get rid of that. And now we just have individual pieces. So we can actually take a moment to name them. So for example, these could be weapons. Let's go ahead and one by one just name these. And then another uh, decision that we do have to make is some of the geometry should be combined, right? So for example, the uh, weapons are already connected to the shoulder, which is great. So uh, if you remember, we actually have them in a separate layer. Uh, and for example, this cable should be attached probably to the head, right? Because it's it should uh, be one piece, especially when it's animating. So let's go ahead and combine these. And as soon as you combine it, you see that uh, all this extra stuff was created. So again, if you just keep clearing this out, you will see that um, they'll be deleted. So let's go ahead and click this, uh, name this as, I'm going to call this head. So now I have weapons, head, uh, the base is fine. And uh, I, again, I don't, I don't want to combine things that are going to be uh, animated separately, right? So as a game character, for example, uh, obviously, right? So like this is going to spin as he's writing. These could be maybe turning a little bit or even bouncing up and down. So you don't want to combine that, for example, with the base. You want to keep that separate. Um, so just to show you, like maybe if he's writing, maybe these could be, you know, moving a little bit to give an illusion of some sort of suspension or some kind of movement. Uh, the wheel, you know, could be, oops, could be spinning. So just common sense, right? So that's what I'm uh, kind of trying to figure out what should be separate and what should be combined. So again, that's the base. Let's check this out. This is the neck. Now, um, 
technically the neck and the head now uh, as I think about it it should technically be one piece right because um, the head would be pivoting from this point not not uh, here so you know what I'm actually gonna combine these two as well and again clear clear my history again I have this button but you just have to if you don't uh, do it this way and now that's gonna be my new head so I got head, I got weapons. What is this guy? Oh, so this is the uh, the actual wheel, right? All right, so essentially I have left myself, and I can drag this up if I wanted to. I, I left myself with four separate pieces. And now if we wanted to, we could group them, but I'm, I'm actually gonna uh, not group them. I'm just gonna leave them alone. I'm fine with that. And now since the outliner is clean, uh, we can move forward. Um, the only other thing that I want to point out is that you guys don't have is I actually added a sky dome to get a better lighting on this guy. So that will become more relevant once we get into uh, rendering. And um, we'll talk about that later on, but you could see that the uh, the lighting under lighting I actually switched to all lights and I created an Arnold uh, sky dome that's all I did and that just kind kind of gives me a different uh, lighting than for example the default light so this is probably what you're seeing on your screen and this is just a little more interesting but again we'll cover all this when we uh, after we do textures and we bring this um, back into Maya for some uh, beautiful uh, render shots if we wanted to right so I think the only other thing that I want to mention is if you select the entire mesh and subdivide it by pressing 3 some of the uh, elements look really cool right and some uh, actually lose some of the details. So for example, the weapon, you can see that it'd be, it's becoming more blobby looking. Um, it, it doesn't really affect the wheel as much or the base. It actually looks pretty cool. But one of the things that uh, I wanted to point out during the modeling part of this uh, lesson is if you do plan on subdividing this, for example, if you just go to mesh and do a smooth on it, Right, which is very similar to pressing three, you can see that some of the edges are being lost. And again, you might say, why am I gonna? Why would I need to do do this? Um, sometimes you want to subdivide if you are not creating a game character and you're, and you're using this for, you know, like a film or some sort of a short animation. Uh, you probably don't want to have blocky look. I'm gonna control Z. Uh, like this you know you can see that this is a little bit more blocky looking and this is great for games but um, if you do need to subdivide it and make it more high resolution uh, one of the things that you will need to do is actually add some edge loops to maintain the shape so just like we did before if you go to the ed edge loops you can actually switch to uh, relative and you can also turn on symmetry, make sure you do this on both sides, right? Uh, you can see that it's also being selected on the other side, right? So you know that object X symmetry is actually working. So that's important. All right, so now since we checked that, uh, let me show you what I meant. Uh, if we go back into object mode, and then let's go ahead again one more time, grab the insert edge loop. To maintain the shape, what you're going to have to do is actually create little edge loops on both sides of your corners, right, or edges. And now look at the difference. So now, for example, if I press 3, you can see the difference between this and this, right? So that's a huge difference. And um, that's going to be really important if you decide to subdivide your model. So. I'm not sure exactly where you're going to be using your um, 3D character in, but in my case, again, I'm I'm not going to do this because I don't need to uh, add more geometry 
and extra polygons because this is going to be a uh, game model, right? I'm going to press 1, and I'm perfectly fine with uh, kind of a low poly look. All right, so I hope this makes sense. And in our next video, let's go ahead and actually uh, take a look at some of the automated ways we can do uh, UVs and uh, then also cover the manual one, which is, uh, you know, is going to be a little more involved in actually laying out every single piece uh, on a texture map. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.